all right so hey there everybody and uh, in this video I just wanted to give a brief overview of what I've been up to over the last few months because I got a couple of people sending me messages hitting me up you know asking where I am what I've been up to if everything's all right with me you know asking me why I haven't posted anything on social media why I've been you know just non-existent so to say you know I did leave a notice some time back but I guess people don't like to read and uh, whatever you know some were even coming up with crazy theories like have you been kidnapped is everything okay Why? what is going on with you man we don't see you anymore where are you are you alive what seriously okay so this video is just a response to all that and uh, show you what I've been working on even though I did mention it but like I said people don't like to read so yeah okay so here's this video okay so yeah, over the last few months I've uh, been working on this project. This is something that I uh, had to do in partial fulfillment of my uh, graduation thesis, uh, which was entitled The Design and Implementation of an Image Analysis Software. Okay, so this this is what I've been up to, guys. Nothing of that sort, you know, those crazy theories you're coming up with. This This is it, you know. I, I can talk about it lightly right now because yeah I've implemented it but you don't know how many hours went into this you know like you'd be working for hours on end you know you don't have the time to answer to uh, messages you know like hi hey what's up I mean you don't have that time so let me get into this you know so I implemented the software itself in uh, Visual Studio 2017 that's the IDE I used and then for the graphical user interface of the application I used uh, the .NET platform with uh, Visual C++ yeah and then for the image processing library I used uh, OpenCV uh, version 3.1 yeah and that's the one that I found that yeah it, it could work with this version of uh, Visual Studio because uh, lately it's becoming harder and harder to you know combine those two because they come from two totally different worlds you know on the Visual Studio platform like most of the code you're going to compile there it's uh, managed you know managed code uh, isn't compiled to machine language but instead it compiles to an intermediary language and then it later runs inside a common language runtime or CLR. I'm pretty sure you've seen that somewhere in your Windows systems. And uh, while it's inside that CLR, you know, certain functions are performed automatically, like uh, memory management, you know, garbage collection, and uh, things of that nature. Yeah. But then on the other hand, you have uh, languages that compile, programming languages that compile directly to machine languages of the system on which they are compiled on. I'm talking about languages like C, C++, you know. So in those languages, those things are not, those are features I mentioned earlier on, are not going to be performed directly for you. If you want more memory to be allocated to you, you have to do it yourself manually. Yeah, if you, and later on you have to deallocate that memory manually by yourself and, all, and so on and so forth. So when you bring those two worlds together and they clash, sometimes it's, yeah, it's not always a perfect combination, but this is, yeah, I considered the a number of factors before coming up with this combination, and uh, based on my analysis, I found that this was the uh, most suitable combination, and yeah, it wasn't perfect, but yeah, I made it work, you know. There were challenges here and there, but yeah, we were able to, you know, overcome them, and here we are today, you know, so I was able to implement this. I think I've talked enough. Let me fire this thing up and uh, show you what I'm talking about, actually. Okay, just wait a moment. Now that lag you're experiencing is firstly because uh, Visual Studio itself, it's yeah, it's kind of slow when you run, when you try to run an app in debug mode or with this mode, yeah, it's kind of slow. And then there's also this screen recording software I'm using capture everything that's happening on the screen so yeah I've talked enough uh, this is the interface of the software yeah, when it comes to user interfaces I'm 
someone who likes to I like to create something that looks you know beautiful that looks uh, nice you know it's pleasing to the eyes I don't like to create something that looks like it was made for you know those pieces from the old days you know pieces that run on Windows XP or one of those older operating systems I like something that's you know visually pleasing you know something that's nice to look at and even though this is not the prettiest uh, software you see I, 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 I tried okay I tried I tried I tried you know so this is what we have over here and then yeah the application itself is divided into various sections uh, this section over here it says uh, uh, basic editing I call it that because most of the things that you find here even people that don't have like an image processing or image analysis background they've come into contact with this at one point or another so long as you have a computer or a, a mobile phone you've used these features you know increasing the brightness of an image contrast saturation which you know all that you know so let's uh, let's open an image right here and uh, test this thing okay we choose this image right here yeah I'm not going to cover brightness and whatever I mean they're just too too basic you know what it is you know okay so let's try this one here image filters people use filters in their daily lives you know on Facebook you find them on Facebook snapchat Instagram you know make yourselves look uh, more beautiful more pretty you know people use them so um, yeah here's just a collection of a few so this one is the sepia sepia filter uh, this one's the black and white or binary uh, this one is a grayscale this one gives the image an effect that looks as that looks as though it's being uh, pinched or rather uh, the contents of the image are being pushed inside towards the center you know yeah and then this is the kaleidoscope effect this is the pixelated effect you know when you want to cover up some of the details in an image yeah this this is what you would do you know uh which one else mm, this is the cartoon effect looks like uh, the image was drawn in a comic book or something of that nature uh which other one do i want to try out okay this one's a detail enhancer I don't know if you can notice the difference but I think it's very visible you know uh, this image out here looks sharper than the original image and uh, I accomplished this by of course there's several ways of doing this uh, by using a method uh, called unsharp masking so the method I used was to first given an original image like this one apply a Gaussian blur to it and then later on we subtract the Gaussian blur, the Gaussian blurred image that we've just created from the original image. And when we do that, that's going to create an edge image, you know. We're going to cover edges later on. It's going to create an edge image. And then once we've obtained that edge image, we add it back to the original image. And the output is going to be sharper than the original image that we had because more focus or emphasis is going to be put on the edges, you know. Yeah and hence the the entire image is going to look sharper you know it's good even with the with the, with, the, with the naked eye you're going to be able to tell that okay this image it looks it looks better than the other one yeah okay enough enough about this section let's uh, go to edge detection okay edges um there are variations of brightness you know in an image and uh they often occur between you know two different regions inside of an image you know so when we say edge detection we're referring to techniques that attempt to find the boundaries of these edges you know within an image and that can be accomplished by uh, calculating the derivatives of the image you know at different points and of course there's several ways of doing that uh, in this application um, we implemented six of those methods but there's so many more out there you know so this is the Laplacian. The Laplacian uh, calculates the second derivatives, second order derivatives of the, the image. Yeah, and this is the output that we have for this image over here. Then this is the Sobel. 
So the operator calculates the first derivative of the image at different points. Okay, so let's also try out this uh, this one. This is the highest corner detector. This one detects uh, the points at which two edges intersect. And the points at which two edges intersect is called a corner. Yeah. And so the points at which corners have been detected are denoted by a circle. So everywhere on the image where you can see a circle, that's uh, where corners have been detected. You know, we can... The, the number of edges detected can increase or decrease uh, depending on the threshold. So we can just adjust the threshold over here with the trackbar, you know, to yeah, to give that to give that effect. So to say, we also have the pre weight operator. Okay, raise the threshold. Keep on raising it until we uh, a satisfactory result. Okay, I think there is good enough. Yeah, so those are the image the edges detected with the pre weight operator. Okay, yeah, so I think that's enough. I don't want to cover everything that's been implemented in this application, otherwise the video will be very long. I don't want it to stretch on and on and on. Yeah, so this is what has been implemented so far. I think the major constraint that I faced uh, with regard to building this application is just time. You know, if I had more time, I would have done more. And I can promise you that in future versions of this application, I'm going to implement as much as I can. So I'm talking features like uh, object detection, uh, image segmentation, what have you. I'm going to implement it all. The major constraint is just time, you know. So you have to do as much as you can with the time that you've been given. So yeah, in future versions, I'm going to do much more. And then I would also like to point out that if if at all there's anyone who's interested in what I'm doing, I know it's it's not going to it's not going to be interesting to everybody. So if there's just that one person out there that's interested in what I'm doing, you know, you'd like to know how I did this, you know, because to the best of my knowledge I haven't seen anybody that's like built a GUI based software uh you know using the uh, Visual Studio and Open C V platforms. I haven't seen that out there, so it's, it's 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 pretty much yeah it's it's a package in itself so if you'd like to know how i set up visual studio how i configured open cv how i did everything you know there's so many so many things i could show i i would be more than willing to make tutorials you know publish videos showing you how to like achieve the same results or even better you know I'd be more than willing, so just let me know if you're one of those people, and uh, I'm willing, I'm here, I'm willing, you know, I believe that knowledge should be shared, I mean, there's no point in knowing everything in the world when, yeah, the only one that knows that, so, if you're interested in knowing more, just let me know, I'll, I'll publish videos, I'll, I'll do whatever I can, you know, if somebody's calling me, let me just uh, pause that, sorry, 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 sorry. And then uh, when it comes to the source code, I'm going to publish the source code. You can download it, you can modify it, you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah, I'm going to leave the source code in the description. So yeah, there's it. And uh, thanks for your time once more and uh, take care.